Let's talk about hollyhock flowers. And great, the leaves are edible, the flowers are edible, makes a great tea, good for inflammation, good for inflammation of the kidneys, all kinds of things, and it's totally non-toxic, really great, no side effects. And I'll get to dosage and everything at the end of the video. Dr. Paul Hader, Master Herbalist, get healthy now. Hey, Dr. Paul Hader, Master Herbalist here. Well, today I want to talk about hollyhock. There's the whole thing with the roots and everything. And, you know, these are really edible, really great. Uh, the young ones, like, uh, I find little tiny ones like this and this. Uh, those are really great in salads. They have a, a nice flavor, just kind of like arugula and uh, spinach, kind of a cross between arugula and spinach, really, really nice. Yeah, it can be cooked, they can be used in fresh. The flowers also, mine haven't bloomed yet. Uh, this thing can get about eight, nine feet tall with lots of wonderful flowers of all colors. And pinks are very popular, reds, blues, all kinds of different things. And they make a great tea also, really nice. And it helps with all kinds of conditions and it's called Alicia rosea. And just now, new studies have been coming out showing that this is full of antioxidants that do the body good. About 19 different antioxidants that are amazing for healing all kinds of conditions. It's called uh, Common Garden Hollyhock uh, Derivatives, Common Hollyhock, uh, Garden Mallow, Garden Hollyhock, all kinds of different things, usually with hollyhock at the end of it. Comes up twice a year on the average from the same seed. The flowers, the leaves, the seeds, the roots, everything is edible. And uh, leaves can be used just like spinach in general, soup stews, casseroles. It grows, started actually in China and then spread throughout the world. And is in the, all the temperate climates around the world, you can find hollyhocks nowadays. And most wonderful gardens have hollyhocks in them growing. And they're just a beautiful, you know, procession of flowers that are just amazing. They need some space, about 30, you know, inches, uh, 15 inches on each side because they get pretty big. Also, it's great for colds and flus. And it helps to get rid of congestion, helps with the cough also. Also helps with kidney stones and preventing kidney stones uh, from forming. That's the most important thing. And it works great for preventing kidney stones. If you have kidney stones that run, <laughs> you know, you're having them all the time. And maybe you had them removed or maybe you removed them naturally and you don't want any more. Then you want to be eating some of this or making tea with it. And that will really make a difference. Also helps to get rid of mucus and congestion. And so if you have problems with mucus all the time, maybe you have allergies going on this time of the year. So this really helps also. All also helps with asthma and opens up the bronchi and helps with spasms of the bronchi. And also it's a great antispasmodic also agent too. So really good for that. Also contains a dihyphen flavonol which opens up the bronchi, which is a agent which is really good. And I'll talk about that another time also. And here it is. Uh, it lowers trigs. That same agent lowers trigs and helps that, you know, there's not that many things that will actually lower down your triglycerides. So this is really great. Also helps with liver cancer. A study in 2017, Journal of Natural Products Research, found that it actually stimulated the immune system and killed liver cell cancer. Uh, liver cancer in general, so really great. Helps with bladder imp uh, irritation, so if you have bladder irritation, you always feel like you have to run to the black bathroom all the time, you want to, want to make some soups or stews or, you know, get the dried leaves. You can buy the dried leaves on Amazon and eBay and that type of thing also. You can get the seeds everywhere. Um, I think I bought for $7, 3,000 seeds. <laughs> you can make tea with that also. Also, it lowers blood glucose, great for those who are diabetics, and helps to balance blood sugar also. Also has that same agent in it, it helps to lower blood sugar. Also heals the GI tract uh, for gastritis, to gastric ulcers, to, and also helps with uh, diarrhea. So if you, you know, have anything like that, it really helps in a great way. Also helps with bronchitis, and you have inflammation in your lungs, this will help 
Yeah, get rid of that in short order. There's no doubt about that. Also helps with emphysema. If you have, a, you know, a hard time breathing, this will help to dilate the blood vessels, the uh, bronchi, so you can uh, breathe easy. Lowers fevers. Uh, anybody has a fever, you know, that's no fun. There's no doubt about that. It's miserable. And just like aspirin, this can lower your fevers. Also, great for sore throats. You can make a tea and use it as a gargle. Uh, and uh, that really does a good uh, way of getting rid of that inflammation of your throat. It's full of antioxidants. Really great. It's anti-inflammatory. Helps with pain, redness, and swelling. Also helps with arthritis. All kinds of things that happen to do with inflammation. And inflammation is the first step toward disease. So you want to get rid of it for sure. Also a good diuretic. It'll help help you, you know, go to the bathroom and get rid of that excess water weight. Also maybe you're, you know, holding on the weight because of uh, the water because of PMS or something like that or uh, actually having <clears throat> your period happen. It will help in a great way. Also helps with skin wounds. If you have a wound, <coughs> it's antibacterial and you can dab some on a little bit of tea on there. Helps it to speed up the healing. Like I said, it's antispasmodic for all parts of the body, and especially GI tract and, and the lungs, too. Also helps with constipation as it has a lot of fiber in it, and it's soothing for the GI tract in general to help you get rid of inflammation of the, the intestines and the stomach and all in the, even the esophagus and everything. Really great. Rich in antioxidants, 19 different antioxidant compounds. Wow. And we're just discovering more and more and more about this because uh, it's really a brand new thing. It's actually been around for, and used for thousands of years, but uh, the research is really just starting to begin right now. Antimicrobial helps with staph infection, salmonella infections, E. coli infection, strep infections, and other bacterial infections. And the Journal of uh, Tropical Medicine 2010 actually saw it was a really great way to treat a lot of different infectious uh, diseases, bacterial infectious diseases. And uh, they thought a lot of new antibiotics could come from this plant also. Also stimulates immune system and so you stave off bacterial and, and viral infections too. Helps with bleeding gums. You can take the tea made from the flowers and actually rinse it around. And also I'll get into how to make that tea at the end. Increases milk production also for mothers that don't have much milk. You know, this can actually work in a great way. Helps with pain in general in the body. I mean, tell you, yeah, pain. You want to be eating some of this or making some of the tea. Works great. There's really no side effects of any kind. I'll get into that in a minute also. Also great for intestinal inflammation. Uh, you can take the tea and rub it on little babies you know, who are teething and get rid of their pain also. Really great. Great for burns. Uh, you know, they're, you're not going to actually let the infant uh, take, actually get a lot of it. I don't recommend that for little tiny babies, but you can just rub it on their gums. That's That'll work great. It also works for burns. Uh, actually, the roots, the stems, and the leaves it can be made into a compress, that, which is pretty wet and put over the burn also, and it helps to get rid of the heat and get rid of the swelling and redness. Also, Rick... Increase the circulation in the body in general, which is really great. Helps with kidney inflammation, as I said. Uh, helps with lustrous hair. If you want to have, you know, glossy, nice looking hair, you can actually make it into a conditioner, which I'll get into in a minute. Also, it makes a, your skin look moist and really feel good. And so you can actually bring more moisture to your skin. Helps with itchy skin also. If you have some kind of uh, paritis going on, then you can get rid of that using wonderful hollyhocks, which is really great. Also, for culinary uses, you, know, you can use it in non-alcoholic beverages and jams and jellies. The young leaves, the stems uh, can all be cooked and can be added to soups and stews and casseroles. Forms. Uh, the raw, the, the leaves can be used and all kinds of different things. Also, the, the flowers can be used and infused. Uh, you can actually take and uh, make a, get a muslin 
excuse me, a cheesecloth bag, put a bunch of the flowers into it, tie it at the top with like dental floss, non-waxed, and put it into some water and let it sit overnight in the fridge and that'll infuse out into the water. And that's a great way to make an infusion that way. Also, you can actually uh, put it on some cloth or maybe uh, a, a sterile gauze and put it on uh, areas which need are affected on your skin. Makes a great mouthwash and make, making the tea can be used for a mouthwash. Also, you can make it into a tincture, which is great. And usually most people take about five mils daily. You can make it into an ointment, which is really good for the skin. And I have another video about how to make an ointment. Uh, even in veterinary medicine, they actually use it for swelling of horses' hocks. So they can actually put it on that air part of the legs and actually uh, get rid of the swelling. How to make a mouthwash. Take uh, two dried hollyhock flowers, one cup of water, and one teaspoon of vodka. Let uh, stand at room temperature in a jar and strain and uh, let it sit in the fridge for about, excuse me, room temperature for overnight and then strain and we'll keep for about five or six days in the fridge. So that's a really great way to make a mouthwash. I already talked about how to make a cold infusion. Uh, also can be used uh, with all kinds of different things for jams and jellies and that type of thing, as I said, because it has some nice colors in the flowers too, which are really beautiful. And can be used as a dye also for, uh, uh, actually for some people's hair. <laughs> and also it might work in certain types of uh, textiles also. And be used for making soap actually too. So you can actually put the flowers in with the soap, really nice. And the actual fiber and the stems can be used for making paper, which is another thing. Also, in uh, spiritually, in Kyoto, Japan, every year in May, they have a large festival. Uh, and they actually use these wonderful flowers and the plants themselves uh, to actually protect against storms and, and all kinds of evil and that type of thing. That's been going on for thousands of years. Also great for butterflies. And if you have this wonderful plant in your yard, you're going to have a lot of bees and a lot of butterflies because they're attracted to it. Also, really no side effects, very safe. But to be really super safe, uh, and you know, it can be used with like babies for teething and things like that. But I recommend for those who are pregnant, nursing, or, or small children, you know, probably a good thing not to use it especially those who are pregnant, you know, certain things do set things off and we want to make sure that that, that baby is going to be great. If you want to get a hold of me, my phone number is and all my contact information is at the end of the video or you can click on show more and it's right down there. I ask for a $50 donation that gets you going and feeling as healthy as I do. I'm doing 100 pull-up crunches right now. I'm going to be 67 on September 10th. And I feel like 20, really. And I really feel good. And you can feel extremely healthy like me if you really want to do that and make a difference in your life. I don't take any medications. I don't take, you know, anything in the way of allopathic medicine at all. I take very little, really, uh, in way of uh, herbal medicine, too. I know how to stay fit as a fiddle, and you can too, and feel great, and have lots of energy. I walk eight miles a day, do workout with weights, do 100 pull-up crunches, uh, actually do sit-ups, 100, on and on and on. So you can feel great and look great. And there's no reason to, you know, actually look bad as you get older. There's no doubt about it. I just saw a lady who is 80, and she's a bodybuilder. I'm telling you, she looked 30. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, look at that. And so you don't have to age badly. There's no doubt about it. So if you want to do a consultation with me, let's do that. And if you want to prevent cancer in your life, read my new book, Live a Cancer-Free Life. And we can make a difference in your life. And, you know, three out of five people are coming down with cancer. What's not let you be a statistic and let's let let you uh, read this short book on how to prevent cancer in your life and uh, you don't need that absolutely nobody needs that I have a friend that's going through that now actually she started using what I recommend in my book actually she's feeling better and she's had surgery and 
uh, everything's a go. It doesn't look like he's going to have to go through radiation therapy or anything else. So good to go. Have a great day. Remember a couple things. Remember God. And remember, I love you.